Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Bennett, it is the Ramble. We go from now until uh, midnight Eastern Time. And as we do every now and then, we like to check in with an old friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. Why? Because that's the way it is, I guess. Who named you again? Was that Paula Poundstone? Paula Poundstone, yeah. Yeah, gave you the bubbles because you were You're so... Right. Because now you, it's been changed to El FOMO. El FOMO. Did I come Keeping up with, up with our demographic yeah. demographic changes. <laughs> El FOMO. Yeah, we ought to Which you a, gave me, and uh, I told you, I said that on stage when I got a huge laugh. <laughs> Uh, uh, what I'm thinking is maybe we should uh, we should uh, put up a big sign at the border that says El Fomo welcomes you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he's uh, and uh, then he's known as he's Larry Bubbles Brown, and uh, he was named by Bubbles by Paula Poundstone. And did it hit? Did it stick immediately? It did, yeah, right away, and I never was able to shake it. It was like my second, first year of comedy, actually. And, no, but did you start calling yourself Bubbles at that point? No, or, everyone or, else did, and then they started advertising me that to the Holy City Zoo calendar, and that was it. So, so all of a sudden, you were Larry Bubbles Brown. Bubbles Brown, yeah. yeah. And then for the rest of your life, you will be asked the question, why is your name Bubbles? What's the Bubbles I know. Why <laughs> It's like people who go who go to a movie and say that couldn't happen. You know, they just they, right. they don't want any mystery in their lives. Why why are you called bubbles? <laughs> so true. Well, because of my effervescent personality, you fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you wouldn't. Then say I used that. to go on the road, and people. Would, I remember a couple times I got picked up at the airport, and they for some reason they thought I was black. Was that where you named Bubbles? We thought you'd be bl- really. <laughs> well, there's something black about you. I I can't say what exactly, because you're the whitest person I know. But you know, very white. Yes. Yeah, but uh, but let me see. I'm trying to think. Wasn't there a black performer named Bubbles? Something Bubbles. Uh, oh God, he was a dancer. His name was uh, something Bubbles. His last name was Bubbles. Yeah, yeah, there was uh, not Johnny Bubbles or yeah, yeah. I know he. Yeah, he used to be on Carson. Really? Wait a minute, yeah, he was like from. He was a very old time performer. His last name was Bubbles. You're right. Well, you know we can find this out. I can simply go. You to can wiki that. <laughs> D- Dancer Bubbles. Let's see if anything comes up. Uh. Ah, here we go. John W. Bubbles. John Tap Bubbles. dancer. Uh, and uh, he was a vaudeville performer. He died in 1986. He was born in 1902. And uh, uh, he, was, um, he was in Porgy and Bess. He played sport in life in Porgy and Bess on Broadway in the original production. Mm, okay. And um, his name was, let's see here, what was it? Uh, Buck and Bubbles was the team. Buck and Bubbles. Buck and Bubbles. I remember Buck and Bubbles. Yeah. Okay. Now we, okay. So your name isn't so fucking original. No, I guess not. And uh, apparently there's a band out now called Bubbles Brown. Oh, really? So I got the email last year. Said, "Oh, great! You're coming to Chicago." And I, I don't have anything in the book in Chicago. It was a band. <laughs> it was a band called Bubbles yeah. Brown. Bubbles Brown. Wow! Wow! Well, uh, capitalizing uh, off my immense fame, apparently. Well, maybe I should call myself uh, Alex Buck when we do these interviews, and we can <laughs> Buck, be Buck and we can Bubbles. Bring them back. <laughs> bring, bring back Buck and Bubbles. 
<laughs> but no, he was on Broadway uh, playing Sport in Life in the original uh, version of uh, Porgy and Bess. So there. You ain't so original, mister. I guess not, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was so we were. You, it's funny, uh, you come up at dinner occasionally. Uh, last night I was having dinner with a uh, uh, San Francisco guy um, uh, uh, that we all know as uh, uh, Buddy Love. An but icon. His real name is, is Bobby Vickers. And uh, that's the name they arrest him by. And uh, <laughs> uh, Court name. Yeah. And we were, we, uh, you, of course, came up at dinner. He, like he, you know, he said, so how's Larry Brown? Because I mentioned I was interviewing you today. And I said, he's the same old Larry. And they said, oh, he still has a flip phone, huh? You know, really? I mean, yeah, no, no, that uh, no, but I brought up the flip phone part. Okay. That certainly became a big deal, the flip phone. Um, it seems every time we talk to you, th this this comes up, mainly because you were an anachronism. Uh, yes, and it, uh, the other night in the car, I spilled a bunch of Diet Coke in the flip phone, and I thought it killed it, but uh, oh, well, I revived you, it you, with a hair dryer. Yeah, where can you get another flip phone? <laughs> well, they have them. <laughs> they do? No. Really? Yeah. Sprint, even Sprint has them in their store, yeah. Would you get another flip phone if this one got on? I'm thinking about uh, Curtis Demartini told me there's a there's a, a, a smartphone called the Jitterbug. I know. <laughs> we old. mentioned this last time. Old people get it. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got, got a gigantic. button on the bottom that says <laughs> 5 on it. And when you hit the yeah, button, that, it calls a gigantic nine, thing it, icon that says email. <laughs> it calls nine one one. You know. Yeah, I should I should come into the twenty first century, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's amazing that you, uh, 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 but uh, you know, I mean, it, I, I, as I say, I have a phone here you can have, but first you've got to look into getting service. And you won't go to that extent. Oh, yeah, I've got four or five people the, uh, offering to give me their old Apple phones. And <laughs> God, well, then what I am I doing? Feel bad for me. Well, well, uh, ask them what version it is, and see which one has the close, the newest version of the phone. You know, like if they want to give you, if they want to give you an iPhone, old. if they want to give you an iPhone two, forget it. You know, yeah, I've got I an, think it's a six. I, I've got a six S here, mm -hmm. which is the uh, the largest size six. Um, so that if you need a jitterbug because your eyesight is going, this is just perfect for you. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love the name. <laughs> no, I saw the jitterbug advertised today on television. Uh, the jitterbug, in case people aren't familiar, is a phone for old people. Is that what we yeah. would call it? You know, mm -hmm. and uh, that makes old people feel they're getting into the 21st century, which they're clearly not. OK. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, and it's a cheap phone, isn't it? It's pretty cheap. Yeah, very cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, unlike the the thousand or eleven hundred dollar iPhones, this thing is like, I don't know, thirty nine ninety five or something. And it's yours. Um, and, uh, then you get some service with it, uh, and, uh, you know, but what you should be able to see, what it'd be wonderful to do is if you got an iPhone, you could use Skype and we could see you in these interviews. Well, that would probably be a negative. So, and, and, well, it, it would be better than, than this, which I'm just showing a picture of you with animation ro rotating yeah. behind you. Yeah. You know. well, we love audio. It's more like radio. Well, you know, I I begin I'm beginning to wonder whether even having podcasts is worth the, the effort. Because when I started doing podcasts, you know how many there were in the whole world? None. One. Mine. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm in the process of trying to convince this guy at a company called a magazine called the Podcast Business. Who wrote that uh, the po the podcast is f celebrating its fifteenth year? And I wrote him and I said, "Wrong." 
I, you know, I was doing it 21 years ago, and I explained how we did it because if I was just uh, if I was just doing a radio program and putting it online, I might not have been the first guy to do that. I don't know, but I was the first guy to come up with a program that a friend of mine wrote, uh, in which uh, you installed it on your computer, and every day it would go to my site and download the newest program to your computer. So when you came home, there it was. Well, that's well, what he, iTunes became, you know. And this guy's going, yeah, but it didn't have the RSS system and blah, blah, blah. I said, that doesn't matter. I was there before anybody, you know. Yeah, you should so, have patented that. You'd be a zillionaire. Yeah, so I didn't come up with the, with the delivery system of RSS, which nobody knows what I'm talking about when I say RSS, but I do. Uh, and it's, it's a file that just tells all these other files what the programs are. But I, but it was a delivery system right to your computer, right? And mm -hmm. uh, this guy's trying to go, well, you know, well, well, yeah, I guess you were there before anybody else, but it wasn't exactly what podcast... Bullshit! It was exactly what podcasts were. You know, so... You're a pioneer. Oh, yeah, I don't dare tell them that the next thing I did was start the first Internet television show. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm not even going to go into that one. You go, well... No, I was... Uh, I can't believe that's over 20 years now. Jesus. You were on those shows. Yeah, yeah, and that was... Uh, and we would do them every day and, uh, you know, go out uh, live uh, to about three people. Because nobody had the ability to pick it up. Well, I think everyone was on dial-up then. <laughs> everyone was on dial-up. We did send it out at, uh, in a high, not high definition, but a higher definition version that was 300 kilobytes per second as opposed to what were we sending out, 25 or whatever, which just gave you a small little picture. But... You know, come on. We were doing it. We were doing it 12 hours a day. I remember that. And if you're a friend, or your friend was Paul, right? Yeah. So if, yeah. If he hadn't died, where do you think that would have ended up? Well, that was the beginning of the, it was right at the time that the Internet started, you know, the uh, tech stocks started falling apart. So who knows what would have happened? You know, the company might have gone out of business anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, but we don't know because he died before that happened. And the reason why the company, basically most of it went out of business was because Paul died and it didn't have its its inspiration and its leader uh, to move it forward. So uh, who knows? But we were there before anybody else on most stuff. Yeah. You, you could have been running a network. Well, in 1999, which still precludes, pre precedes the what this guy calls the uh, beginning of the podcast, which he places at about 203, in, uh, we were doing, uh, even before we did the video version of it, we were doing audio going out, and people could listen to it. So we were doing about three shows. So we were doing podcasts like crazy before anybody else was. And, uh, you know, I just, I just like, I guess I'd like a little credit, you know? Yeah, I certainly deserve the credit. You know, I'd like a little credit for the innovation. And for both innovations, the, the, then, it, then it matriculated to the TV version of the same thing. And I don't know, it's, you know, life sucks. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll, I'll drop dead and I'll be a has been. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, that's the holiday <laughs> holiday cheer. <laughs> I mean, I you know I don't even the porn industry should give me a fucking award. You know because I came up with the first um, uh, uh, porn uh, pre presentation that was entirely done on videotape. So I invent, I, I brought into being the video aspect of, of porn. 
Not that there hadn't been already been porn videotapes for the home, because but they were all on film. I actually produced one that was done on video, for video. Which saved them a fortune. Which saved them a fortune, changed the whole industry. Do I get invited to the AVN Awards <laughs> and given a Lifetime Achievement Award? No. Well, blow me. Well, actually, at that convention, they probably would. Uh, there was uh, something I wanted to see here a couple of years ago. There was a uh, one of these little art theaters here had uh, porn from like from the dawn of film, which I didn't know they did porn oh, in 1915, you know, but I guess they must have. No, I, that would have been interesting to see. Well, I always had a theory that uh, the first thing that people do when they get a camcorder or anything that will record video. The first thing they do is videotape their cat, okay? And the second thing they do is videotape themselves <laughs> fucking. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> and, and I think that's probably the way um, the film industry went. It started out with uh, people showing pictures of trains coming at you, right? Mm -hmm. And then porn. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thomas Edison was grinding away. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Grinding away is true. Yeah. Uh, um, no, it, no. Actually, see, I am, I am kind of correct when I say that. And here's how I'm, how I'm correct. Okay. Um, the the first films that they did were these loops that went in these. Kinograph. I mean, they were called kinograph machines that you, you, uh, you, you know, you you um, ran the uh, the handle around and around and around, and the film, not the film, but it, it was it was a form of film went through, and you could see things happening in there. And uh, they one of the first ones, the most popular one, back in the day, the thing that started the whole kinograph. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fad was a thing called the kiss, and it was a guy with a big mustache and a woman, a, a rather portly woman, kissing. Mm. Boy, I bet they got a real boner off of that one. <laughs> but you know, sex was like one of the first things ever shown. I mean, that's a form of sex. First things shown in film, um, and if you know it was porn that put video home video on the map. There was a point early on where something like sixty percent of all video being sold on videotape for home consumption was porn. Well, that's probably you might be right because. Uh the movie studio. Remember, the movie studios were so uh, territorial about their stuff. They they didn't realize they could make money by renting their old films out. Well, oh, they didn't so want. They, they balked at that for a while. They balked at it because they were worried that that was a way that people could steal it. Yeah, and they were right. I mean, in that respect. But the fact was, it could also be a large source of income for you because not everybody's going to steal it. All right. But uh, you know, video changed the whole the whole nature of film because you're right. The f the film companies in the old days, if you owned a copy of say, Gone with the Wind, you were doing something highly illegal. Yeah. Uh, and and if you had that film in your possession, uh, nothing proved more that you were doing something criminal than the fact that you had a film in your possession. Uh, but the thing was that video made it so much easier to steal stuff. All you had to do was copy the video. Uh, and in those days, it went down what they call one generation or two. And let's say you recorded it, and then you let somebody else record it from you, and then the picture is third generation. By the time you get to the fourth or fifth generation, you're watching a blur on the screen. Right. Because every time you did it, the picture was diminished. Well, today we have digital I can make 200 digital copies of the same digital file, and it's no different. It looks just as good as the original file. So, you know, theft today is, it, it, come on, it's, it's, it's rampant. 
But you, what you have to do is learn of ways in which you uh, make the thing uh, uh, work better. You know, you, you live up, get, catch up to the times and you find new ways to, um, uh, you find new ways of, uh, of distributing or of preventing piracy that you hadn't in the past. But they haven't really come up with it. So, I mean, everything is, is stealable today. I can lead you to websites where you can download uh, a movie that's playing in the movie theaters right now. And uh, I think maybe it's something that they shouldn't try to fight on a legal level. They should try and fight it on a technological level. That there have got to be ways to prevent people from making copies of films. Uh, but so far, they haven't. You know, I would go out, what I do is I go out and get all the guys who are stealing the films now. If I were a movie company, I would hire them. And I would hire them to figure out a way to make it so you can't steal the films. And they'd probably come up with a pretty good way. Because Yeah, they, I wonder, I mean, they tried that with, uh, well, they first started stealing music, and that's, they couldn't stop that. Right. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, you can't, you know, and it is difficult to steal you know, it is easy to steal music. Um, but it wasn't in the days when you had discs. How do you make another disc? You know, that that's the the big argument. So, uh, what the hell, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's just, uh, uh, who knows. Yeah, how I wonder how much money they're losing. It must be incredible. Uh, I don't know. That, you know, I really don't know that they're losing that much. I mean, if people want the latest Lady Gaga, I think they would down they would buy it from iTunes, you know, uh, uh, because um, ownership means that you have yourself a clean copy of it, you know. You don't know what other garbage might be in there. It's like buying street heroin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't know what's in it. I mean, there may be. It's always a surprise. <laughs> there, well, there may be. There may be bugs. There may be worms. There may be, you know, uh, all kinds of things that are out to steal your identity. Which I'll not let you do your joke. And <laughs> now his life sucks. <laughs> yeah, somebody stole. I think your line was somebody. It was you did it on Letterman. Somebody stole yeah, my identity. Stole my identity. Now, now he, his life sucks. <laughs> You know, um, uh, I, I, I think that what we haven't what we haven't been able to cope with, what we're never able to cope with is is technology and that there is there are new rules when a new technology comes out. I'll give you a good example is porn. We always go back to porn. Isn't that where it all started? <laughs> In the old days, uh, if you had porn and they arrested you, they arrested you and you had these films and they would go into court and they would show the judge the, the films and uh, say, look here, here they are. And you could hold them up to the light and you could see some of the images on there and you were guilty of something. Well, all of a sudden, here comes videotape. All right. Now, you can't, if you have a porno videotape, you can't hold it up to the light and see the image. So there's no image on the tape. It's a latent image that is only seen once it is run through an applicable device which decodes the information on there and turns it into porn. So now, if you're arresting somebody with tapes, what are you arresting? You're basically you're arresting latent images, uh -huh. you know, uh, and and that being the case, the latent images are, uh, are. How do you bust a latent image? And that's why all of a sudden porn started being seen a lot. Is because it was very difficult to prosecute. You can't, you know, you go into a judge, you say, "Look, I got a tape here. I'm sorry. Show me the picture. Well, we have to put it in the machine." Well, no, that doesn't count. Years ago, when they, uh, when they used to ship porn across state lines, you know how they did it? Undeveloped. Oh, really? That's yeah. Great. You could send away to companies that would send you porn, and it would be, uh, you'd have to develop it at home, the film at home. 
you know. Wow. So um, anyway, that uh, you know, that uh, uh, that was a, a a perfect example of uh, of how technology changes the method in which we do things and how they have to had to learn to cope. And I don't think they've really busted many people for selling porn videotapes over the years because it's really the old laws just don't take that into account. So, anyway. Hey, listen, bubs. Hey, Guess buddy. what? We've run out of time. Yeah. You know? So let me uh, let me say goodbye to you at this point, and hopefully we will do this again next week, correct? If we're, if we're both alive, we will do it if, again. If we're both alive. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderfulness that is Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. <laughs> Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Bubbles. We appreciate the, uh, the use of your talent here on our program. Let me uh, get rid of uh, the music stuff. Let me get up the Skype stuff, and let's see if anybody decides they want to call as I go online with Skype now. Yes, let me get rid of the the callers from the last show here. Oops. There we go. There we go. I don't... Just stop it. Stop Stop singing to me. I don't like that. All right. So anyway, uh, our, uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, uh, you can use Skype. And if you don't know how to use Skype or you don't know how to get a hold of us, go over to gabnet.net and over there... On the left hand side, right hand side of the page, rather, there's a whole tutorial. There's just a whole tutorial on how to do it. And there's somebody calling right now. And uh, right off the bat, it's uh, our old friend Brian Ludwig. Uh, hello there, Brian. Hello. Uh, how are you this evening? I'm all right. Yeah. Where is that? Is that, uh, is that your actual room or is that like a basement you're in? This is a basement. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. And you're out of sync, and you will be out of sync till somebody else calls, and then it all goes into sync. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, Whatever. So, so how are you? You're calling. You're one of the first off the bat. I don't know how that happened. But I'm doing all right. I just, uh, yeah. Usually I don't call it right on the dot, ten thirty or whatever. Yeah. Well, here, here you are, you're Mr. Excitement. Uh, yeah, I just woke up from it. Oh, I see. Okay, well, we'll let you wake up while we say hello to Phil. Good evening, Phil. Hey. Hello there. How are you? Uh, which one are you talking to? I'm talking to you, Phil. Oh, well, um, I'm okay, although, man, my back hurts. And I don't even know if I'm going to make it through the show. You, wait a minute, your back hurts? What from? Uh, I think it's my car seat, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just, and it's just exacerbating uh, the pain it just gets, uh, every time I sit in it, it's worse. Do you, uh, do you, do you have any ibuprofen at home? Uh, yeah, probably take a couple ibuprofen. That'll take care of the back. Take it for you. Yeah. Right even here. though I'm taking aspirin for, uh, uh, and, and blood thinners and all of that stuff, you can take that. Yeah. Ibuprofen. Blow out your a, liver. I, 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 ibuprofen is a yeah, blow out your liver. Uh, <laughs> not if you do a little bit of it. Uh, I yeah. find it's the best thing for back aches and things like that. And it doesn't thin out your blood. That's not what it does. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm on blood thinners. But, take, uh, a, take an ibuprofen. And if you drop dead, blame it on me. I, you know, I, I just can't seem to rationalize buying another car. I love the car I have. It's just that the seat is not comfortable. Well, have anymore. you gone maybe to the, uh, the to the car place or something and said, my, my seat is, like, killing me? What can we do about it? Uh, yeah, there's an upholsterer down the street, they said. You know, uh, nobody's giving me satisfaction. Well, wait a minute. How long ago did you buy the car? Uh, 2011. That's probably so the reason why. Why is it that your back is hurting now and wasn't like three years uh, ago? There's a metal frame uh, uh, in the driver's seat, and it seems as though uh, the longer you own the car, the more it breaks down the seat. Yeah. And, so, and, so what uh, we're saying here have, is it, it's, a, it's a matter of an older car that's causing the problem. Yeah, but they don't make this model anymore, and I really like it. And I, I, 
you know, it's it's like brand new, so I, I really don't want to get rid of it. You, uh, you know, uh, except the seat. Yeah. Hi, hi, Jeff. Get more of your face in the picture. Yeah. Hey, hello there. there you go. That's it. How's that? Yeah. Well, like uh, I said the other day, I, I've been shopping, looking around at other cars just to see if there's anything I like. And uh, so far, uh, I think it's the Escalade is is stupid. You know, I'm not paying ninety five grand for a car, and you're not uh, a and you're not a pimp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I even or a mob at the, boss. At the other at the other models like the uh, Suburban and and, and those, and uh, uh, now I'm going to look at a Volvo. Volvo is supposed to be very good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the seats are really comfortable too, which uh, could help. Yeah, I'd buy a car, but there's no, there's nothing in it for me. You know? There's no place for you to park it. Well, I mean, yeah, well, I can park it in a garage, but that garage is going to cost me eight hundred bucks a month. Yeah, well, if you lived back out here, you'd need a car. You know, in New York, well, no, you don't that's, need one. it's different because when you get an apartment or something in uh, in uh, California, uh, yeah. there's parking. There's a garage, a little place to put your car, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, forget it. You've got to, oh, God, I'm going to sneeze. God bless you. Yeah. Don't blow your brains out. I'm blowing, I, I've been sneezing a lot lately. I think there's dust in this house or something. Anyway, uh, uh, the thing is that, that uh, you know, that, First, you have to buy the car. That costs money. Okay, all right. But, you know, they buy it on payments. What? It doesn't matter. That's fine. Okay. So let's say the payments are going to cost you 500 a month. Let's just say that for grins. It always does. For grins. Okay? Yeah. Then you got to pay for the insurance. And in New York City, insurance yeah. for a car is more than it is, say, where out where you live. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't know how much the insurance would be, but I would imagine, what, a couple hundred bucks a month? Maybe 300 bucks a month? Uh, you know, it, it never goes down, but it's running me about 120 bucks a month. 120 bucks a month. Oh, okay, so let's say it just cost me 200 because it's New York City, okay? Yeah. So now we're up to what? $700 a month. Right. Uh, then a garage. That's another probably... I would say if I if I found if I found a place somewhere probably five hundred five hundred at the least. Okay, yeah. so now we're up to what? We're up uh, to seven five twelve. Huh? Twelve hundred a month. It, we're, uh, no, that's we're, before you put any gas in it. Yeah, yeah. And before you pay a toll. Yeah. And and the question is, how much am I going to use it? Yeah. You know, well, like I with, with, when I live in California, hell, I would uh, I would take my car just to go up five blocks to the drugstore rather than walk. Right? right. That's the way everybody in e California e they live in their car. They they don't walk. They even if you have to park six blocks away from the drugstore to find a parking, you're, you're going to drive to the drugstore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I mean, in California, I use my car all the time. You know, I, I never went out the front door. I always went down the back stairwell to get to the garage. Right? And yeah. Get in the car and go a block to get somewhere. Uh, One of the biggest American rackets in existence. What? Yeah, automobile industry. What? As it exists. Well, I don't know that it's a racket. Well, you know, in 1940s, 1930s, you know, you could take the trolley every damn where, even in the city of Pittsburgh. Well, you could. but you can, like in New York City. The one, one of the reasons you don't own a car in New York City, and I'm sure Jeff will agree with me on this, is we've got such a great transit system. Yeah. That to take yeah. your car somewhere is a pain in the ass because if you, go, I wish more it, cities were like your city. If you leave your garage. You gotta, and you're gonna drive downtown. You've got to find either a parking space, which are hardly available in New York, or put put it in another garage at well, you know ten dollars an hour. I, I have a New York parking story. A friend of mine, I went to visit. So he he uh, he and his friend decided that they were going to take us to this restaurant, which yeah. I don't think is around anymore. It was called the DDL Food Show, Dino De Laurentiis Food Show. So. Yeah. The guy had to make an appointment 24 hours in advance to get his car out of the garage. So really? he makes the appointment, gets the car out of the garage. We're in the car. 
he gets to the uh, to the to the place. It's somewhere in Midtown Manhattan. Can't find a parking space, so the guy drives around while everyone else eats, and then <laughs> picks us back up and takes us back to his garage. <laughs> so, you know, he never got okay. to go into the restaurant. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you know, so, he couldn't find parking. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the the sum total of it is, is that if I if I wouldn't drive downtown to some place, I'd take the subway because I can go on the subway faster than by taking a cab or an Uber or something like that or anything else. And uh, uh, the buses are are terrific, too. So, you know, you just kind of go, eh. Why do I need a car? I don't need one. And if I need one, I've got a credit card. I go over to Hertz. I rent one for the day, and I go wherever I'm going to go. Sure. You know. Well, you know, even my dad's company back in the 60s and early 70s, the carpet installers never brought the carpet to the job because you couldn't find parking for a big truck. So he, my father had these trucks and drivers, and they would deliver the stuff at 3 o'clock in the morning to the commercial sites so that uh, the the goods were there, and people could just use a, a regular car to get to the to get their tools to the job site. Yeah, uh, it was so difficult to park, and that was in the early seventies. Well, you know, in New York City years ago, when I did have a car in New York, because I I came to New York and had a car here, uh, uh, I would use it to drive around town at night. And I found that if you went to any particular area and wanted to find a parking space. All you had to do was drive around the block about three times, and eventually somebody would move out of a space and you could park. It was that easy. Right. I don't think it's that easy anymore. No. You know. Well, yeah. the, the, other, the other parts of uh, looking for a car is social conscience. You know, I, I really want a, uh, these hydrogen cell vehicles. You know, I just like the idea. They're not, of, full, they're not fully developed yet. No, they're not. They're, they're not. not. Uh, there, there's a place in San Ramon about 20 miles from me that has the hydrogen cells, but you only get about 300 miles on a tank. And uh, if I'm not back in, in San Ramon uh, at the time I need it, I'm going to be in trouble. I mean, if you, if you, if you d don't do that much driving, certainly uh, an uh, uh, electric car is, is a good idea. But it... An electric car is only good if you live in the suburbs and your wife needs something to go to the grocery store with. You yeah. Know? Well, then there's the Prius. But, you know, these, these cars are ugly, especially the hydrogen cell one, the Mirai. Uh, it, it makes a Prius look good. That, and and uh, it, then there's another car out uh, called the Cadillac something or other. Uh, you can plug it in, but it also has a generator. So if your charge only lasts like 300 miles, the generator kicks in and and charges the car on the go. Uh, it's not an it's not a motor. It's just a generator. Well, I the great fear I have about electric cars mm. is that I'm always at you know where I I'm always at the mercy of looking at a fuel gauge too. But when you're right. looking at an electric gauge, if that car dies on you, yeah, you're SOL. Somebody's got to shove you to the closest place to plug it in, you know, and where's yeah. that, you know, and, and also they don't, it's not like they charge in 10 minutes, right? Uh -huh. It's like they take several hours to get to a full charge. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't know that all electric cars are the answer. I think the hybrid is the answer. It's the closest answer mm -hmm. or yeah. a car in which you basically use the electric but if it goes out, you've got enough gas uh, to get to get you somewhere. Get you somewhere, you know. Yeah. Oh, how well, easily this conversation could bleed on over into politics. <laughs> how easily this conversation could bleed on over into politics. It's probably so a green new well, deal well, I, has to be implemented in order to have it so that you can drive an electric vehicle and not have to worry about being stranded in the middle of butt fuck alleys. No, Kansas no, but even town. look, look, it's even, not just even, politics. Even, even if the government mandated that every gas station also had to have electric outlets for you to be able to plug into. The fact of the matter is, you better find a nice diner nearby who's willing to have you sit there for about three hours while the fucking thing charges. That's and, the problem. Yeah, you know, if you go to Whole Foods, they've got these charging stations. Yeah. I don't know if they charge for them. I know if you have a Tesla, 
There are special charging stations you can go to that I think are free. Yeah. Uh, to to charge I them think up. You're right. They are. But uh, so how you know, long are you gonna sit there? I, I've I've had I heard all of these horror stories about Teslas. If you need a fender, you you might be waiting six or eight months because it's getting price, you know, Yeah, it's all the parts. You can't get them. Well, and, it's a, it's not one of your huge automobile companies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> I just don't know that all electric automobiles are the answer. But I don't think that gas emitting cars are the answer either. I mean, there must yeah. be some other power they can come up with that's far more uh, reliable and extensive. I want to yeah. know that I've got a car where if I have to go, I mean, like I know, yeah, I have a car, I'll have a car, maybe I'll only get 300 miles to a tank of gas. Let's just say that's what I do. The same yeah. as I would get with plugging in the electricity. The only difference is I stick a nozzle in the tank and in about two minutes I fill the tank. Where with right. electric, I've got, to, I've got to sit there for three hours, four hours overnight or whatever in order to and, charge it and you can fill the tank just about anywhere you go in the in the country that's right but there I mean, was an article i read online that said that thorium could be used an um, element called thorium could be used as a uh, fuel source for isn't that what they give people that are overactive and yeah, uh, they need yeah, to yeah. settle them i know that's riddling <laughs> uh, that almost sounds like an antidepressant yes uh uh jeff my my wife has a Prius and she's pretty happy with it. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I I, I drove it. I've been in some of them. And they're know. pretty luxurious inside. You were in a car once, I think, Alan. My I think so, my yeah. buddy loaned me his Prius once. Uh, and this is before I had a dog. And he asked me. He was going out of the country, and he said, "Phil, he says I need you to take care of my dog." So uh, and he knew I didn't like putting the dog in my car because it shedded. So uh, he gave me the Prius and he gave me the dog. And a week yeah. later, I, I, I drove everywhere I normally drive. And a week later, I think I put $10 worth of gas in the thing. Whereas in my car at the time, I had an Audi TT. Mm -hmm. uh, I must have put maybe $60 worth of gas in the same time period, the same mm -hmm. kind of driving. So uh, it was not bad. <laughs> Uh, I, I, my, my son has the other car, which is a, a Toyota, which is kind of a full sedan. Type yeah. Of. Oh, the Camry the type thing. At the same time. Yeah. It's a Camry. Yeah. It's really, it's pretty nice. Yeah. But I, I, I rented a hybrid once and I found that it was only good for about 29 miles for a gallon. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't think that it was that economical. Well, when you're getting 18, I think with the with the uh, Prius, they get around 40 or 50, depending on how you drive them. Right. Uh, with my uh, Toyota FJ Cruiser, I get 18, yeah. if I'm lucky. And that's just, yours is not a hybrid, it's just a regular. No, it's just a regular V6. Yes, gas guzzler. Yeah. So on a hybrid car that size, Phil, you would get, I don't know, 30 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a... a it's almost a two for one. Yeah. If you think uh, about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and it's it's just nice. Not you know, I don't want to pollute. Uh, you know, I, and oh, I want you know. to. I I love the idea of polluting. Well, I've been polluting for so long that it's time to stop. Yeah, I mean, still... uh, 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 at my age, any way I can be a drag on this society, it's okay by me. You know? Just ask them for an extra plastic yeah. straw yeah, whenever want, you go want, to the I, store. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna Give use, me two straws. I want two plastic straws, exactly. Right. I really this, want I to saw this woman on television. They were doing a thing about straws, and this was on, uh, on I think, CBS Sunday Morning, about they're trying to find alternatives to straws and things like that. Oh, yeah, I started listening to that. Yeah. Uh, they were talking paper, and the stores straws yeah. and, collapsed. And, and this, woman, this woman says, well, I love my straw, and she pulls out this thing, and it's a metal straw. Uh, is I'm, it for Coke? Yeah, I get yeah. it. For, well, that <laughs> too. got bacteria and shit in it. But, yeah, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, that is maybe the most unhygienic thing yeah. you could have because how much bacteria and stuff is going to get into that straw because you're not washing it out every time you use it, you know? Yeah. 
So. Looks like you got uh, a guest uh, oh, on oh, his yeah. way in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Move over here. So you're going to have to talk into this mic so they can uh, they can see you. Uh, uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, show everybody my guest first, and then we'll get back to our discussion. Uh, but uh, here is uh, th this is this is Buddy Love, ladies and gentlemen, who has been been staying with us. Hello, Buddy. How are you? Superb. Good to be with you. Talk. Get closer into the. Mic. It's so great to be with all of you. I know yeah. this guy. Yeah, that's Phil. That's, that's Phil. Phil. Hi, Phil. You're out. out hey, in, um, how you doing? Uh, East Bay. Correct. That, oh, put on those that's right. there. Those, those, that's uh, Buddy Love uh, of the Buddy Love Orchestra. Wow. <laughs> Buddy Love Orchestra. <laughs> Buddy Love Combo. Buddy Love. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You've got to. You. He's uh, he's now Robot Man here. But uh, there there you go. There we go. Okay. Can you hear that? Can you hear good? I can hear beautifully. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful. You're not getting slapped back from me. I was too lazy to put these things in and decided to go go uh, on the speaker. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, back to what we were what we were talking about. What were we yeah. talking about? Oh yeah, hybrid cars. Well, we were talking hybrid about cars. hybrid cars. You don't have a hybrid car, do you? No, buddy. No, I have a beautifully appointed Chrysler Town and Country minivan. Yeah, where you'll get more mileage. With a different car. Okay, good, good. <laughs> how many miles to the gallon do you get? Now, uh, how around many the, how, around the city. How many gallons to a mile do you get? Oh, brother. I get, uh, let's talk MPG. I get about, in the city, 13 to 14 on the highway, up to 22. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, does it have Cordova letter? leather? Rich Corinthian <laughs> leather. No. And, and that's why... Corinthian, I, you yeah. Know, Corinthian I, I might add that that's why I don't... Uh, why I don't have a car is exactly that reason. Because it doesn't have rich Corinthian leather? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, so we've been talking about, you know, hybrids versus, you know, whatever other grids there are. Yeah, car shopping. So uh, You've been out car I'm, shopping? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 starting, I'm starting the ordeal. Um, my my lovely bride drives a Ford Fusion hybrid, which she loves. Uh, I heard a laugh. A Ford Fusion. It's a nice car. Did you used to have a Corvette? I had a 1964 white Corvette coupe, fully loaded. Every option possible. Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, power windows, tinted glass, leather interior. Did I say automatic transmission? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was and that the fastback? It was like the fastback. It was the, uh, but it did not have the split have, window. Right, that was '63. Yep. Yeah. And that uh, car was a uh, Concours winning automobile. I did a full frame off restoration. I took you for a ride in that car. So what happened to it? I sold it. Oh, <laughs> I got divorced. I sold it. Yeah, you got divorced. <laughs> I sold it. You, you know my line about being married for the first time. I, Lasted 16 years with the wind chill. It felt like 25. Yeah, <laughs> very cute. So that's the second time he's done that joke in front of me in the. Yeah, last well, day. In the well, last it's show. nothing unusual. Hours. Yeah, how many times do you do the same joke? Well, I I do them many, many, many over my career. Well, even over the last five years. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you can reuse a joke and reuse a joke because the same people that are listening to me today may not may not have heard me when I told that joke before. And just because you heard me tell it doesn't mean you're not going to find oh. it just as funny and as wonderful as the first time I well, told it. That's in the radio days when your audience turned over every 15 minutes. You Those know. were in the old days when my audience just turned over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, anyway. So. Have you told them the, the Panchalette joke? The, uh, the, the, oh, no, it's not good. That takes forever to tell. Yeah, but what else do you got? I mean, come no, on. Hey, I, you got an hour and a half. Come yeah. on. We have important stuff to talk about. No, no, no. Let's, let's not. <laughs> okay. Because that, it it's takes, your show. I just. No, you know, it's one of those jokes that if you're going to tell it right, you have to really you elaborate. Have, you have to okay. just. It takes, I got the suggestion. It Call Pendulette, get him on the uh, phone, and have him tell the joke. He's probably in the middle of his second show. He's right probably now. in the middle of his second show right now. Well, yeah. you know, hey, it's always better the second time. Yeah. But this in, right. this involves a set of conjoined twins and a trombone. Okay, that's all I need uh, to tell you. Yeah. 
Okay. And right. Engelbert Humperdinck. Don't and forget that. And here's what I think. I think that people should tell each other every joke they know. And then anytime they want to retell the joke, don't retell it. Just say the punchline. Yeah. Right. Like, for instance, you'll laugh at this punchline. And the same goes for your cat, too. And the horse you rode in on. No, no, that's the that's the punchline. Do the, you know the joke? He smiled. Do you yeah, know the he, joke? Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't remember uh, what the rest of the joke was. Yeah, the joke. All I remember is the punchline. That's line. the joke. That's good. That's all you need. That's to the joke. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> and, and to the joke, <laughs> he's he's texting. <laughs> huh? We're losing him. Oh, uh, Brian has business. Business. What are you doing, Brian? By the way, we can business. use some more callers tonight. I know this is going to be a slow week. We're only doing two nights this week. Yeah. And we're taking Thursday and Friday off so well, I can it's Thanksgiving. Huh? It's Thanksgiving. Yeah. However, I'm not I'm not gonna have Thanksgiving off really because I'm gonna be spending about an hour and a half here with uh, uh with Jack Garfine trying to get the second part of his story, or at least part of the second part of his story, because there's so much to cover about his time um, working on Broadway and as a director and at the actors studio and Hollywood and all that. Well, I, I watched that series that you recommended on uh, uh, Netflix uh, the, uh, with uh, uh, Michael Douglas and oh, uh, Alan one. Arkin. Yeah. Was that enjoyable? Uh, you know, it, it was it was I, it's I very good. It. Thank you. It's called the uh, the, uh, the, the, the Kaminsky, Kaminsky method. Kaminsky method. method right. Yeah. Right. And and uh, somebody else uh, wrote me and said that they saw it on my recommendation and raved about it. It's really good. Well, I, I, I wrote huh? you into it. Really oh, good. did we, you watch it? We watched one episode uh, here uh, two nights ago. I, yeah. I couldn't stop. Fabulous. I, I yeah. binged it. Yeah. I binged it. Yeah. 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 Well, of course, it's very easy to binge because my, what I said to Marjorie was that each episode is anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes long. And if right. you watch all eight episodes, it takes about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. And it's actually shorter than watching an Avengers film. It, it was uh, it was good. Uh, I, uh, you know, I wonder, how do you come up with this stuff? You know, where do you find these things? You know, I, I didn't know it existed. I have no life. Well, <laughs> here's the other thing. It, 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 the right. writing is yeah. superb. Chuck Lorre. Oh, absolutely. It's unbelievably Chuck Lorre, well who written. does the Big Bang Theory yeah. and Mom and... Uh, it's so well written. Uh, yeah. And, the, I mean, the dialogue is, you know... So it, it rolls off their tongues. These guys yeah. are great actors, number one. Yeah. And, and they were great it, together. Yeah. 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 There's an episode where Arkin I, does a eulogy, a eulogy to his wife, and it is one right. of the best pieces of acting I've seen in years. It is yeah. just so subtle in its, yeah. in its complexity. Now, uh, there was also something where he was he was uh, complaining, going through something in uh, in uh, uh, Landon's uh, not Landon in the uh, in the class, and the students thought that it was real, and they applauded him. Uh, do you remember that? They uh, uh, it was something about his wife dying, and they, and they uh, and he he was uh, uh, very upset, and they thought it was uh, they, they thought, thought it was acting. acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, well, who's the gal interest? Michael Douglas, the the blonde. Uh, uh, the I forget her name now. She's Susan great. Sullivan is her name. Yeah. 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 It's the actress. Um, and Margaret's in it, if you notice. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, she's the uh, uh, the hot to trot uh, uh, widow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, That's part of widow. But what I liked about it was is that it w didn't make fun of old people. It made fun of getting old. Yeah, you know, and that's what was so good about. It. I mean, it didn't it didn't make them into doddering people, but people who yeah. were just suffering the pangs of aging. Right. Uh, well, you know, it it uh, it, it gave uh, prostate sufferers a place to be. And I'll tell you, <laughs> this is what is so great about Netflix. The yeah. networks would have never picked up a show like that because it doesn't it, it appeal creative. because it doesn't appeal to a young audience. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, and I don't think they would have done it if it wasn't on Netflix because they only have to commit themselves to eight episodes, and it's on Netflix, which is a little higher level of television than.
doing it every week for 22 weeks on CBS, like Lori has to do with all his other shows. And uh, and there'll probably be another series. They'll probably do. I hope so. I, I wanted more. You know. Uh, well, oh, I, it, I was it, ready. It, it, How could, many episodes it, was it? It's only eight episodes. Eight. Oh, good. Okay. Cool. So when you get home, you can watch all of them. <laughs> yeah. You know. But uh, anyway, so Buddy's been staying with us, and we went and had dinner last night. Oh, that was Thank phenomenal. you very much. Oh. He bought me a hat. I should have brought the hat in. He had. A, you know the hat. They had a hat joke. That's a good one. What? He had <laughs> a hat. You know that. Jewish, yeah, yeah. The Jewish mother calls her son. <laughs> Ivan, it's been six years since I've seen you. Like a knife in the chest, you're killing me. Not only are you killing me, you're killing my, your, your father. We have yet to see the grandchild. Mom, I'm, I'm, he's in the garment business. Yeah. I'm in the garment business. I can't take time off. I'll tell you what. I'll put little Junior on the airplane. He'll go down to Florida, meet you. And hugs and kisses at the airport will be great. So little Junior... Gets on the airplane, goes down to Miami Beach. She picks him up, takes him to the Baby Gap. You know the yeah. Gets him a beautiful sunsuit with a hat. They're out in the uh, Miami Beach. He's digging yeah. in the shovel. You know, with a puck, had having a blast, and yeah. she's reading the Miami Tribune. Yeah. All of a sudden, a wave comes in, picks the kid up, t- throws him out in the middle of the ocean. She runs to the shore. She looks up to the heavens. God, what do you do? You're killing me. Like a knife in the chest, you're killing me. You take from me my only grandchild, God. Anything, bring back my grandchild. All of a sudden, Wave drops a kid on the shore. She runs over, picks him up. He's not even wet. He had a hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I, I don't, my problem is I've never been good at remembering jokes. You know, I'll hear a joke and I'll go around and tell other people the joke for a while, but I have a hard time remembering jokes. You have to tell them over and over. But he told me the joke, started telling me this joke last night, and before he was, what, a minute into it? Yeah, you knew that. I gave you the punchline. Yeah. 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 Well, you can figure them out, but now you didn't grow up in New York. It wasn't a matter of figuring them out. This was a joke that Penn Jillette had told me. Oh. And I remembered because Penn Jillette took three and a half hours to tell it. Yeah. You yeah. really have to take your time. There's no shortcuts. And the longer you take, the, the more you elaborate on different aspects of what happened. And, and Penn, when he does it, turns it into a theatrical experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Is this something that's uh, on YouTube? Huh? Is his uh, uh, portrayal of this joke on I YouTube? It. No, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt yeah. it. No. I doubt it. Uh, and uh, also the bear joke. That oh, I told yeah, you last that's night. That's a good one. The bear joke, when he tells it, goes on forever. Yeah. You know? And uh, uh, they did a film called The Aristocrats, in which they had everybody tell the same joke. Because mm-hmm. everybody had a different way of telling it. And Penn's way of telling it is the longest way of telling it. You know? But that was a good... That was This a, was a good, good version. A I, good version of what? Of the... Um, the, uh, bear joke? Uh, yeah. No, not the bear joke. The aristocrats. The aristocrats. Oh. Well, there were several different versions of it. I mean, everybody <clears throat> over the years, I mean, I knew the joke myself. Yeah. You know, I think you probably knew it. I knew the and joke. And so they did this movie in which they I showed. I heard that joke how many different when I was versions? like 10 years old. It right. Was like yeah. Existing joke that just continuously other people would change it. but it would be right. that. The short it's, of it, ladies and gentlemen, is this guy goes into an agent. And he says, I've got the greatest act you've ever seen. He says, well, what is your act? He says, well, first I come out, and then my brother comes out, and I blow him. And then our mother comes out, and my brother eats my mother. And then my father comes and shoves his dick up my brother's ass. And then my aunt comes in, and she starts rubbing her tits in my face, and then we shit all over each other. And he says, my God, that's an amazing act. What do you call yourself? He says, we call ourselves the aristocrats. And Gilbert Godfrey told that joke, <laughs> laughed my ass off. Yeah, but he's not the only one that tells the joke. Yeah. Well, I know he's not. In, in the film, it's got about 20 different versions. Yeah. and. Everybody embellished it in their own way and told it in their own way. So really, it is the it is the telling of the joke that's important, yeah. not the punchline. 
There it's wasn't rare. much of a punchline. Well, it's a great, it's a great punchline. No, it is a great punchline. It's how you set the punchline up. Well, uh, should I tell them the yeah. bear joke? Yeah. I, I'm going to do the short version of the bear joke because I can't, uh, I can't do the long version. I, I can't do it justice. Okay, All this right. guy's out hunting in the woods one day with his gun. This is an anti-gun joke, and mm. he. Um, Across the glade, he sees a bear. And so he puts the gun up to his eye, and he gets him right in his sights. It pulls the trigger, blam, the rifle goes off and misses the bear. The bear turns around, comes and walks over to the guy, mad as hell, grabs the gun, throws it on the ground, and says, don't ever do that again. He said, you tried to kill me. He said, but just to make sure you never try this again, I'm going to leave you with something to remember. And he then takes his greasy bear dick and shoves it up this guy's ass. And the guy is like, and he humps away on him and humps away on him, and finally he stops and the guy is lying there on the ground. His ass is bleeding from this greasy bear dick. And uh, <laughs> the bear, bear says, now, don't ever do that again. And he turns around and leaves. And as he's walking away, the guy thinks, I can't miss a second time. <laughs> so he grabs the gun, holds it up to his eye. First, he has a hard time standing up because he's bleeding from his ass. And he sh fires at the bear, and he misses him again. Good. And the bear turns around, walks over to him, grabs a rifle, throw, slams it down on the ground, and says, okay, pal, you didn't listen to what I had to say. Drop trowel. And he proceeds with his big, greasy bear dick <laughs> to fuck the shit out of this guy. The guy is bleeding. There is bear spermatozoa coming out of his ass. It is just terrible. And this guy feels completely demeaned. And he's lying there, and the bear goes, don't ever do that again. And he turns around, and he walks away. And the guy thinks to himself, that fucking bear, he said, he's not going to get away with this. How many times can I miss him? And he says, he then picks up the gun, aims it at the bear who's walking away, and fires and misses him. The bear is now enraged. He turns around. He comes back. He grabs the gun. He breaks it over his knee. He then looks at the guy and said, I told you never to do that again. And he immediately turns him around and gives him the biggest royal ringing with his greasy bear dick you've ever seen in your life. And this guy is just in horrible, horrible shape. And then he turns around the bear and walks away. The guy goes, fourth time's got to be the charm. I can't miss him this time. This time he grabs the, the, the rifle. Oh, aims it was broken. At, oh, excuse me. I did, he didn't break it. Uh, he okay. <laughs> aims it at the bear. The bear, he fires Misses again, the bear turns around, walks over to the guy. Now he grabs the rifle, throws it down to the ground and breaks it. And he looks at the guy and he says, you know something? I don't think you came here to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bear joke. I don't think you came to hunt. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, if he's, if he's gay, then uh, that's certain. So from here on in, I don't have to tell the joke he's, anymore. I'll just say to you guys, I, I just... Uh, uh, you didn't come here, here to, to hunt, hunt did you? you came, I don't think you came here to hunt, did you? Now, we were talking <laughs> last night about, I, I said to them, uh, what was the first joke they ever learned? Do you remember, any of you remember the first joke you ever learned? Oh, it had to be the kindergarten, you know, the chicken mm -hmm. crossing, the, crossing the road or... To get uh, to the well, other side. No, but well, did, don't a... you remember the first joke that you ever learned or that you ever told to other people? Because uh, I do, no. I do. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? I, you can't either? I can't remember. Come on, Brian. Most most, most of them were uh, were uh, Bell Barth jokes that I learned off a record. Oh. <laughs> oh your, your parents had those body records. Those. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And I thought they were funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Brian, uh, do you remember the first joke you ever learned? Only uh, vaguely from like the third grade. Oh, I can't even piece them together enough to tell you the story right. I am going to say, though, that, uh, you know, for a while now, and now you have your guest there, uh, I've had an increasing urge to want to uh, uh, make a go of trying out for the uh, entertainment industry. But. Really? really? With that ebullient personality of yours? Well, it works well, for Larry Bubbles. Laugh it works for two, it I? works for Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, so why, why not, not you? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, not very well. Well, the <laughs> first joke I ever learned, my father taught me. I told him this yeah. last night. My father taught me because uh, he liked the idea that he could take his kid to a party and then say, "Okay, tell him the joke," and then I would tell this joke. Mm -hmm. Now, believe it or not, I didn't know till I was older what the punchline actually meant. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the joke went something like this. It's a short story. A princess is out in the forest walking when she happens upon a frog. And the frog looks up at her and says, hey, princess. And she goes, a talking frog? He says, yeah, what do you expect? This is a fairy tale. Of course it's a talking frog. She says, wow. She says, now look, I'll tell you something. You take me home tonight. You put me under your pillow next to you, okay? And the next morning when you wake up, I will be a handsome prince. So, she says, fine. She takes the frog home. She puts him under the pillow in the bed next to her. She goes to sleep. And the next morning she wakes up and sure enough, there is a handsome young prince next to her in bed. And do you know to this day her parents don't believe the story? <laughs> <laughs> now, my father would have me tell this. I was like, you know, six years old to a crowd of people. But he taught me. He, he, we, we went over it and over it and over it until he... So this was his idea of how you turn your kid into a prop, you know? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I, the thing... Yeah, talk, get the, closer the, uh, to the mic. The jokes that I did were always more like bits, Lenny Bruce bits, uh, Bert and I. Do you remember Bert and I, the, the uh, science guy? No, no, no. <laughs> down east. This is like, if you're from north, northern Maine, it's, it's called down east. Yeah. Because you're down east yeah. from, from the wind. Um, at any rate, do you remember that Bert and I? Two Yale guys did this thing, and, and they're, they're like total... Hick, not hicks from Maine that mm -hmm. uh, that are fishermen. Yeah. But and I come down to the dock about six o'clock mm -hmm. in the early morning. <laughs> Bert went down to start up the bluebird. So, 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 so. As you could tell by the coldness, the bluebird was having trouble turning over. So we advanced the spark and turned it over in earnest. Well, you could tell we got it started. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And there's short ones like, uh, I've been driving up this hill for over two hours. Hey, farmer, ain't there no end? Little stranger, there's no hill. You just lost your two hind wheels. I mean, you know, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. Totally hilarious stuff. Yeah. Uh, there, there was that New York uh, this guy. I know I, he was. He was. Uh, he used to tell stories. You knew him, Alex. Gene Shepard. Uh, Gene Shepard. That's it. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, the only thing I can remember that he used to say is, "Life is a dreary desert." <laughs> you know. I, you know that. Well, you know, it's funny. I never. I it, uh, people always talk to me about Gene Shepard, and I never heard Gene Shepard. Because, uh, I mean, I have heard him. You've all heard him. He's the narrator on a, uh, a Christmas, story, Christmas story. And he's also the person who wrote it. Uh, and uh, But but Shep used to go on the air every night and tell stories. And, and people, uh, kids all over New York used to listen under their covers. Oh, yeah. Because their parents yeah. wanted them to go to bed early. And what? What were you going to say, Jeff? I did all the time. Yeah. And he every, told me every and, night. But I didn't grow up in New York, so I wasn't part of the legend. But I knew Shep because I hung out with Earl Dowd, and Shep would come up to Earl's house for dinner, and we became friends there. 
And, and in case people don't know who we're talking about, this, you, of course, I said A Christmas Carol, so you know that voice. But he um, uh, told these stories about growing up and, you know, what it was like to grow up. And it was the story's very much like a Christmas story, except they yeah. did this every night. And uh, he was, uh, he, people loved him, just found him brilliant. But I, because I never grew up in New York, I didn't grow up in New York, was not privileged yeah. to that. And I, the only thing I can say is I knew Gene, I knew Shep, as we called him, uh, quite well. And, uh, you know, but I, somehow I didn't realize the legend I was, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 hanging out with the Christmas story. The is this the yeah. the Christmas story? Which um, movie? Uh, the movie of Natalie Wood. That one. No, which no, one? the Christmas story with the kid and the Daisy rifle. All oh, right, yeah, right, right. That yeah. One. yeah, yeah. Okay, that shoot was, your eye out. That yeah, was your... like nineteen uh, seventy something, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You shoot your eye out with that kid. Yeah, you know. remember it well. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, he also glasses. did a. He did on, on Saturday night, he did a show in the village. And I used to go and see it quite often. I can't remember yeah. which store it was. Uh, but but he, he was a great performer. He really was. Yeah, yeah. He was now, a, uh, Zachary was a, another, uh, you know, radio personality that told stories. And did he? No, Zachary, correct me. Zachary never told stories. Sure. No. Now Zach, I Zach, think I could be wrong about you're this. You're wrong but about that. But did he Zach. do the master monster mash? Who, who no. did the monster? Well, mash? that was Bobby Pickett. Bobby Pickett. Oh. I think he did a version does of he it. Have but, a, oh. he, does he have all, a VHS what? video recorder behind him? No, that's no. A it's a uh, it's a photo printer, oh, of sure. Epson thirty eight hundred. Uh, okay. But uh, no, Zachary never told stories. Zachary hosted horror films. Yeah. Yeah, but he did a, he did radio stuff too. No, I remember him no, he coming did, he, to he, WBCR, he, he, no, Brooklyn no, College he, Radio. He was a disc yeah. jockey. Yeah, on right. radio, and um, uh, I became very. Well, I, he didn't he didn't tell stories like G, uh, Shepard did, but no, no, he uh, he didn't yeah. really tell stories. He that was not what he was known for, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, Zach, Zach and I used to hang out all the time. We, I remember. Once, uh, once we were out, the, it went out to the beach, out to this beach out in Long Island to go get some seaside food, you know. And we're sitting in this little shack of a restaurant, and a bunch of girls are staring at us. And he looks over at me in that Zach voice and goes, huh, I think they just saw a horror host or a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. Yeah. I loved him. Uh. He was a wonderful man. Yeah, I Lincoln, think somebody Lincoln. stole his eight-track tape player when he came to visit uh, Brooklyn College Radio WBCR. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, his his uh, tape deck got stolen. Yeah, but uh, he, uh, I think he lived to be almost a hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. A Cecil, huh? A Cecil. That's what I call a hundred. A Cecil. A Cecil. A Century Cecil. note. Cecil. A Cecil. A C note. Yeah. Oh, oh. Here comes uh, here comes uh, John Rockwell. Let's see here. Hello, John. Uh, let's say a big hello to John. Uh, there he is. Hello oh, there, oh, John. Oh, How are you? Hello. I'm doing. I just got in from uh, from the uh, the last uh, last hurrah of a, a great old beer bar in Midtown. Uh, they just lost their lease because the landlord, and you know this, Alex, landlords here, when you're, especially if you're a business, when your lease is up, they want to raise you 3,000%. <laughs> That's what they did. It's like, but you know what going. they do? This is what is really the crime. They're, like There was a restaurant down in Soho that we used to like going to all the time. And so we went down one Sunday to go there. It's been open, was open for about Oh, forever, right? 35 years or something like that. And uh, we went down there, and it's closed. Just closed. What? And, and, and so, okay, so you, nowhere, you, you right? figure they want to raise the rents. They want somebody who's going to pay a higher rent, so they, you know. We go back six, seven months later. It's still closed. Nobody decided to no, rent takes, the place. Some of these, they, 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 they shut down the... 
Don't give them a new new lease. And it takes years to fill it up. And they even just let it sit. Wouldn't they have been better? For, wouldn't they have been better for a branch of CVS or yeah. or Dwayne Reed to show up? But wouldn't they have done better had they allowed people? You would think. Yeah, you there. would think to stay there well, and and just raise their rent. Yeah. Moderate, and, I, I, and you know the other thing. These guys had they, a ten-year lease, which is one thing. In New York, you can get ten-year leases. Yeah. So they started in 08. Actually, they started the same. They opened up the same leak that I had my my little recording studio opened up about ten blocks away. So it's like, oh great, a place to go after work, you know. So I hung out there. It's called Rattle and Hum, uh-huh. you know, Irish style bar, you know. And uh, they close on the twenty fifth, but tonight was their their bittersweet you know uh tonight bring all your you know if you remember us come and you know it was very nice it was really really nice they had good beer and i ran into a few people i hadn't seen for a while it was lovely as you can tell and maybe you can't but uh i was with some friends who bought me a lot of beer (laughs) so i'm doing good what how he's you guys a little buzz. He's a little buzzed. Yeah. I am a little buzzed. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. A little bit buzzed. Not that are you, much. Are you Irish but by any chance? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, and this he, was an he, Irish he, pub? He's just an alcoholic. That's <laughs> well, there you go. Exactly. Uh, did you, I'm a beer hawk. I, 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 I have this, uh, this three friends in Ireland. They're sitting around a pub. Their first one looking at her and he goes, you know, this pub's a bit dingy. My mm. pub's not more than 250 meters from where we sit. It's the best goddamn pub in all of Ireland. You buy a <laughs> shot of Jameson's at my pub, you get your first pint of Guinness for free. Second guy goes, ah, that's nothing. I live out Carlani. It's a ways out now. But you buy a shot of Jameson's at my pub, you get your first and your second pint of Guinness for free. <laughs> Third guy's shaking his head, looking at both of them. You're a bunch of pikers. Not more than 250 meters from where we sit is the best goddamn pub in all of Ireland. Mm-hmm. You buy a shot of Jameson's at my pub, you get your first, your second, your third, your fourth, and your fifth pint again is for free and you get laid as well. Really? And this has happened to you? No, but it's happened to me sister twice. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that joke last night, too. Yeah. Is it true you only Absolutely. know three jokes? No, and I know that was a bunch of jokes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but oh no, lovely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, so no, I just yeah. I, I sort of came in at the end of this, but yeah, uh, yeah. it was yeah. interesting what yeah. you guys been going on about. Yeah, and uh, not the usual stuff, which is sort of fun. Yeah, little, yeah. Little little. little it's well, a uh, feel very Johnson, cool. It's a no Trump zone tonight. No Trump okay, zone. very good. Well, <laughs> I won't do my. I won't do my make make America rake again thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. Well, I won't do that one. Anyway. I uh, uh, go on my Facebook page. You can see that. I I have uh, you know what I did the other day. I was watching a BBC mm. news. Yeah. Oh, how do you man. spell that? I, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I um I I I I felt so clean watching it because. <laughs> The, it wasn't like every other story was about Trump. It was yeah. about everything, about the world around us, and and stories that I didn't know were happening. And, and the actual and world, <laughs> the whole Brexit thing that's going on now in England. And, oh God! Uh, and yeah, what's happening with May? They say that uh, she may lose her uh, position. I guess. Uh, uh, well, it's come down to that. It come down to, you know, that she's now getting. To the point where they got to, you know, there's some serious stuff that has well, to be dealt with. Well, the story is, in case people don't know, because yeah. you, you you play hell finding the story on American television. True. Yeah. But what what happened was, is basically, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it too, is that they, because of Brexit, which is Britain leaving the European Union, they came out with this whole plan of how it's going to go. And nobody likes it. <laughs> Nobody yeah. likes it. There is no easy way to Especially do it. Especially the Europeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Europeans aren't happy like, either. You, know, uh, uh, but, but, you guys are so stupid, basically. They're saying, why do you want to even deal with this? But they do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the guy that engineered the Brexit, uh, who was part of her he cabinet, quit. I believe. He quit. Yeah. He, he quit, quit, but he's he coming quit. around again, and they're saying that he may end up with a PM job. Oh, shit. Well, it could be, well, but, you know. somebody can... Uh, 
maybe make it work or at least he somebody better make it work you yeah know? but i mean he he quit he just yeah that was it you know so i mean it it so it's stories like that and then you know there'll be some story about something is happening in pakistan or whatever and i'm going Phew. and marjorie and i were both lying there uh this was last friday watching it from watching it for an hour and we went boy what a relief yeah. what a relief you know, the, the, actual it, news. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where where it, it, where you don't have Trump monopolizing the news <clears throat> and, you know, and and so we weren't getting irritated because to begin with, a lot of these things didn't really affect us. So we didn't care. That too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else's misery. Yeah. <laughs> But exactly. I mean, it, it, but there are things going, you know, I, at night I watch the news like with Lesser Holt, America's most trusted news anchor. <laughs> and at, at least the last 10 mi minutes are nothing but fluff stories, you know? Yeah. The, the kid who, who got a birthday cake uh, because he's dying of cancer or something like yeah, that, you right, know what yeah. I mean? What, there really story, is a bad on NBC. Yeah. Puppies up a tree or whatever. This is the last 10 minutes of the news, and I'm sitting there going, isn't there something happening in the world that's more important than this puppy up a tree story? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, and, and apparently, I guess there isn't. You know? and I, Oh, I, not on NBC anyway. But when you've got 20 minutes to do the news, which is essentially what you have after commercials— don't you think you can avoid that story about the puppy? Yeah. Don't you think you could give us a, one more story about something that maybe Show is going to affect our lives? Cut up. It's content that doesn't cost. I mean, for instance, Let's a, entertainment a, a, tonight. A, a, another that story they were covering that they they really there's Patrick. Uh, hey, these are uh, very familiar faces. He, he, Hi, Patrick. Yeah. Do you remember me, Buddy Love? Yeah. Please, Buddy yes. Love here. Uh, but anyway. Uh, uh, the, the 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 problem is is that you don't um uh for instance they're they're having a big meeting in where is it Bur uh, burma i think uh, mm. uh where you know it's all about asian trade and so on and so forth it's going on with china it's a very important meeting do we see any real news about it here no i haven't heard about it. no you know pence was over there doing his part and trying to you know <laughs> bespeak yeah. america's case and you he know. did stare down putin uh, there was some article i saw that where pence oh, well, good. Uh, gave that's, him a, uh, a dirty one. look oh that's so that that that, re go. that really is well, brave that's really brave yeah. uh, good for him god I'm, well, hey if you don't stare him down uh, or punch him then he's well, no yeah, good. But, uh, if but you how, punch him, how, he's no how, good. How can you, and I don't want to get too political tonight, but how yeah. do you stare down somebody that your boss would rim? Okay? <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, so I'll tell you what I did. Oh, here comes Ray Renati. Ah, now we're getting more people in here. That's now cool. we're starting to fill up. Now it's becoming a happy fizzies party. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I haven't thought of that for a long time. Uh, hey, Ray, how are you? It's a happy I'm doing good. How about you? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, is your mic on? Yeah. Uh, you, it's you're, you're, there. It's, it's just, just low. Yeah, his oh, camera's a little bright, too, but don't. Yeah, I'm going to fix it all. Don't worry about that. Anyway. Uh, Mine's not so bright. So yeah. I had a cheap thrill this weekend, and it, it, my girlfriend tells me, shut up already about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happened was I've had a, I didn't realize this, a, a, a printer, and it was starting to kind of, the, the printing was getting fuzzy, okay? So I figure, eh, maybe it's time for a new printer. And I suddenly realized I hadn't bought a new printer in like eight years. I think we bought this at the time I moved into this apartment. So uh, I was go this uh, laser, or did you uh, use no. a uh, stone and uh, uh, no, chisel? No, using it's, it's an inkjet. It's an inkjet. Uh, okay. So I went to I went to Costco, and I uh, and I looked around and I said, "Let me see what." I, I don't want a laser because those things that, that changing the ink is too expensive. Uh, Not really. <laughs> well, you know, you get 300 pages out of some of these inkjet things. Yeah, but not and, if you're paying 36 bucks for all the ink instead of the 80 or 90 they'd like you to spend on it because you get you get the off brand and it's just yeah. as good. Anyway, so I uh, I I looked at the inkjet and I, uh, 
this one's a little pricey, but I'll buy it anyway compared to the rest, right? Hundred nine dollars. Uh, I, I, it turned out I haven't bought a printer in eight years because what this does was so simple compared to the old one and just set up. I mean, I plugged everything in and it goes onto the web and upgrades the operating system in the, in the machine. And it, it does this and it does that. And it's got a, it's got, it's got a fax built into it and it, it's got a feeder for it. If you want to scan and you can scan 10 pages at a time i mean it 109 bucks did you fall for the uh uh discounted ink delivery on a regular oh, basis no no contract? no i didn't do that no <laughs> oh no 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 not at hp's prices yeah for yeah. nine dollars a month i can get 300 pages or something like that or, yeah right you know and and they they will judge because it will send them a message when I'm running out of ink, and then they will send me the new ink, of course, at their HP prices. Yeah, right. But I can go get these refurbs and whatever for ink, and they, they, they do the job. I'm, I'm not printing photographs here. I don't give a shit. I just want to print out, you know, little items, little news items. Buddy, when you asked me about that printer behind me. Yes. Yeah. When I changed all the ink cartridges, there's nine of them. And it was five hundred and twenty-five dollars to change oh, the ink cartridges. <laughs> Jesus. The, the printer new is thirteen hundred bucks, but it was five twenty-five to yeah. change nine ink cartridges. Wow! wow. And here, how, here, how long do they last? Uh, a, a year and a half, two years. And, you know, it depends on how many photos you print. By the way, there's Bree calling us from uh, Dubai. Dubai. Hello. Hey, yeah, he's hey, in hey, Dubai. He My yeah. kind of town. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but anyway, so Real see, see how nice it prints here. now. You see that? Very nice. Um, uh, so I printed up a whole bunch of items I probably won't even read tonight. So, you know. <laughs> but it, uh, uh, I, I was so, uh, I'm, I, I was so amazed by this printer and the stuff it does and how easy it is to set up and use and all of that that uh compared to the old one which was a clunker um and cost me more i think uh oh yeah yeah things have come down in price well the reason these printers are so cheap is they want to sell you the ink the ink is right where they make you know the it's it's the razor versus the razor blade routine you know We'll, we'll sell you the. Yeah. How much do razor blades cost now? Oh, the, the, uh, the a lot of money. With a, you know, five packs, thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, but they've got each blade has five blades in it. Right. It used I'll to be you. you had one blade. Well, you, you, I can and, use and, one and it of had those two sides. For, and you cut. Do you ever remember on Saturday Night Live years ago they did a phony ad? When, the, when they came out with the Track 2, you remember the two blades? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, uh, two blades, Track 2. Buddy what? Love shirt. Look at oh, this. Oh, Sign. Look, look, look. Mr. Look love that. himself. <laughs> All right. That's a, that is a relic there. I know. I got I got this like 25 years ago, I think. Oh. Yeah. That's when we yeah. came, right after we came from uh, back from New York. They're talking the to the mic. Out. When the book came Can you out. hear me? Yeah, I yeah. can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Well, are you gonna come to our Christmas show? Where, are you, where do you still live? Back in. Uh, the, I live in. I live near San Francisco. Okay. Uh, on the twenty third of December, at the yeah. chapel. Uh, okay. We do our annual Christmas show with the trio and the full big band. At the chapel. Is the chapel the on Valencia That's Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the 23rd? Okay. Yeah, this is our 27th annual Christmas yeah. show. December 23rd. Yeah. The I'll night be before, there. the night before Christmas. I'm plugging my show. Bree won't be able to get there because he's in Dubai. I auditioned for some car commercial with you like 20 years ago. Yeah, it was like you and me and one other guy. Yeah, we were. We were. Well, who got the job? I don't know. Yeah. None of us, I don't think. I don't think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so, uh, Bree, are you getting ready for Thanksgiving in Dubai, or do they just bypass yeah. Thanksgiving? No, <clears throat> you no, we have it. Um, many places. Uh, I don't. I don't do my own. I, it's so easy just to have it delivered or pick it up. There's so many places that do it. Yeah. So, you just order it uh, for five bucks. You get a big tray of stuff you can never finish. Yeah. Now, oh, what okay. does Thanksgiving mean to the people in Dubai? 
Or is um, this for ex- expats, Turkey? It's got to be expats. <laughs> Thanksgiving is, you know, I think one of the best holidays uh, that America has sort of uh, given to the world, if you will. Um, everyone, everyone, everywhere can really partake in because this a, holiday. It's, it's a non-secular holiday, and it has a universal meaning. Yeah. See the yeah. difference between Bree and me? He likes Thanksgiving. I like Halloween. You know, <laughs> yeah. right. the that's only because it's the only time when you can. Because Phil, it's the only time. It's the only time. It's the only time of the year when you can acceptably dress up as a ballerina. So uh, that's true. Yeah, or go out and drag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I got this new printer and I'm thrilled with it. And my wife says, "Will you shut up about the printer fucking printer? It? Huh? Just an HP Office Pro. It's called." Yeah, and it, it, I, I got this one Epson where the, they have ink tanks, and they say that I like I wouldn't have to change it in ten years. Like it's you get ten thousand pages, and it's what? like an ink tank. Whoa! Have you seen this? No, no. no. Because all the uh, you're right, all the all ones they want you to get to buy the ink. So like you're constantly buying ink. Yeah, but this ink my tank. old one I couldn't get the ink here. It's only in Southeast Asia. So I bought this one that has these ink tanks. And I've had it for a year now, and I've never had to change it. Ink, ink what? Tanks. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Very good. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, but uh, I, I loved your uh, bear joke earlier, Alex. That was great. Yeah, well, that, that 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 that's one of uh, our, oh, yeah, our favorite jokes. Wow, here comes uh, Kevin. Good. Just got a Thanksgiving email. Wow. Whoa. Is uh, we're one hey, short yeah. of a full house here. One short of a full house. Happy Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, There is. Hi, uh, Kevin. Bree is. Oh, is that is that a menu for Thanksgiving, Bree? No, they're just. This is HR, and they're saying that uh, they'll have it uh, for us on Thursday. Oh, okay. Oh, human resource. Now, now, do they supply you with a turkey, or do you just? Yes, of course. Really? Of course. Carving starts on the twenty second, and when does it finish? Oh, oh! So, in other words, you 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 go over there to eat. You don't do your own yeah. turkey. I see. Sure, if you want to eat in the cafeteria. But if you that's, if you want to make your own turkey, is it easy to find a turkey to buy this time of year in Dubai? Alex, I told you, you can get anything you want here, in any which way. Uh, it's, I find it's, that it's, I can it's, get it's more a, stuff it, here at different times than New York City. It's a Muslim place, country. I guarantee you can't find a hooker. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I'm heading, uh, heading for Dubai. <laughs> hey, Bree, do you ever go to Kuwait? <laughs> oh. Do you ever uh, go to Kuwait? No. Oh, okay. Just yeah. wondering. What's there? Emirates. Yeah, what is in Kuwait? Just wondering. I have no people there. Well, if you, you come to this, if you come to the Gulf, you come to Dubai. That's pretty much it. If you, wait a minute. If you really he, want he's, to, wait, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We have, we have now a That's full it. house. Uh, Buddy's going to leave because you got to hit it, hit the sack. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted. Well, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, I have to do, I have to do a recording at twelve fifteen, but I'll see you before you go. Oh no, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous great to Buddy see, Love. Great to see you guys. Hey, I hope care. to see uh, my San Francisco <laughs> buddies. On, so uh, I was going to ask who went to Rattle and Hum at the chapel on Valencia Me. Street. <laughs> chapel. Do you know? Do you know why they call it that? Twenty third. Well, that. it's from the U two uh, song, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no. uh, have a good sleep. I will. Thanks. Okay. Take care, buddy. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. That's Oops. Fabulous. I got to move this chair I'm back. I have the guys who start rattling home are very YouTube. Irish. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. And they actually still have another. They have a. They have another. They have two bars now, but that was the original, and people were really pretty upset when I was there because, you know, they were doing fine. But the, no, that's the happening. That's happening. Oh. And a ten-year lease said we're not going to renew it unless you pay shitloads more. Right. Like, the movie theater. Oh, okay. the, the the movie theater we go to, which I always call the comfy chair theater, right next door mm-hmm. to it, was uh, one of the last remaining delis in New York City, because mm-hmm. they're only like about maybe 
two or three delis I, left. There's Katz's, there's one other, and I can't remember. Oh, and the, the and real, the, and the real and, Jewish and the, delis, and not the, Smilers. And the Second Avenue other. deli, which isn't on Second Avenue oh, anymore. Oh, right, right, not anymore, yeah. And, and otherwise, there was this other one, and we said, well, let's go get ourselves a, a you know, yeah, sandwich right. before we go home. And it's closed. It's gone. It's gone. It's yeah. been there for years. Gone. Well, Finished, you know. <laughs> I can tell you that in I had a lot of friends in Singapore who would be staying in a place for a year and then they would want to raise the rent. And uh, it was always based on, I mean, even here in Dubai, the hotel rates can change from week to week, depending on where they're located and, yeah. you know, how things are going. So Demand. rents, same yeah. thing in Singapore. And I never understood that. Like they, um, they, they wanted to raise their rent. So they had to move out, and there were like eight of them living in this three-bedroom place. And if I remember correctly, the new people couldn't move in, or they didn't get somebody until a month after. So for one month, they didn't get rent at all. So if you added up the amount that they were asking for, and then the month that they didn't get, it would have been the same. So they went through all this, getting all these people out, moving new people in, and they didn't make any more money. It, was, it seemed mm -hmm. ridiculous. That's pretty standard. standard probably got a higher rent. I remember uh, about, about two months ago, I was going to take a, I took a class in Monterey and uh, it seemed, I went to get a hotel room because, you know, you drive down, you're in a class all day. So I, I tried to get a hotel motel room, but it seems as though that weekend there was some sort of Porsche event and, and uh, the rooms were all booked up and the only room and the only rooms you could get where it was a $90 room that was $400. So, you know, I called a few hotels and I said, look, I don't want to buy the hotel. I just want to stay there one night. And, uh, you know, but depending on what the what's going on and what the demand for rooms are, uh, will uh, raise the price uh, for those rooms. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the, the Monterey something hotel that I like to stay at, it's downtown. It's normally 120 a night, and it's very nice old hotel, and sure. Monterey Plaza. And then uh, you know it was, it, it, if it wasn't sold out, it was $400 a room. And so I said, "Not, not going to happen." So yeah. I drove down, I came back. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you can be a famous person and still have that problem. We had a. Uh, down the street from me is Wahlburgers, as in Mark Wahlberg and all those things. Mm -hmm. It was the Upper East Side Wahlburgers until a week and a half ago. It's gone. They were only there for about a year, less than a year, well, less than a year and a half. You know, I restaurants. Thought were, I thought they were doing good. Restaurants sudden, are both. They're on. Yeah. Restaurants uh, have are the highest failure rate oh, I think, yeah, of any yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, even well, higher well, than I, years ago. Years ago. Um, uh, uh, I, there was somebody I knew, this was when I was in San Francisco, who wanted me to invest in a restaurant. And that sounded like a good idea. Well, my business manager's father used to run things like the Upstairs at the Downstairs, which was a nightclub mm. here in New York. And he used to run sure. a lot of things called the uh, Gypsy Tea Rooms or something around the area. And my business manager said to me, you want to buy a restaurant? Buy into a restaurant? Go right ahead. Find yourself another business manager. Ooh, you know, he said crazy. it is the worst idea you could come up with. He said everybody mm. thinks it's a wonderful idea. I'm going to have my own restaurant that I own that I can then take my friends to and say, "Oh, come on to my restaurant." And it, 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 restaurants are the worst investment you can mm. possibly make because their chance of failure is incredible. And if the manager doesn't steal you blind. So what are you doing for Thanksgiving, Patrick? Uh, I'm going to be doing absolutely nothing because I cannot drive because of my foot. Um, so I didn't I'm, think you used your feet to drive. What? Yeah, but to, to transfer in and out of my car, <clears throat> it's the other night, the pressure on the foot. It's too much, so they won't let me drive. Mm. So, uh, oh, so I'll be I'll be watching football, and that'll that'll be it. My folks are gonna come over Friday then with leftovers, um, and then I'll have my Thanksgiving feast Friday. Yeah. To me, it doesn't really matter what day. They were gonna uh, skip the family deal and come over by me on 
Thursday and we were going to order Chinese. And I said, why? Just stay with the family. I don't give a shit about the day. Come over on Friday and, you know, we can spend some time together and bullshit. So, yeah. Bring the extra turkey. What the heck? <laughs> that happened, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Did you see? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sarah great. Michelle Geller, did you see her photo that she posted on Instagram? No. She she has a picture where she's uh, wearing like Victoria's Secret, and she said uh, she was going to post this up all around her house on Thanksgiving so she would remember not to eat too much. And she caught a lot of flack about this. Yeah. Oh, really? Everybody gets flack about anything they do. Hello, Tim. What are you doing for Thanksgiving, Tim? Tim? Which. We're just having a just a, a small turkey dinner this year. Small turkey dinner. With just with family at the house. There's no such thing as a small turkey. You know. <laughs> Not yeah, anymore. Well, we, we, we're used to getting the biggest. We usually buy the biggest one they have, but this year we're going to get the medium sized one. Well, the problem Tiny is turkey. here. Here's the problem. I, I, we invited um, Jack Garfine and Natalia over uh, to have Thanksgiving with us, right? So Marge is going to make this big turkey, but. Natalia is a vegan. Whoop. Whoop. Tofurkey. Yeah. Right. Tofurkey. Yeah. Um, a lot of yams. <laughs> what is this? What? I'm trying to remember now the turkey that they made at this restaurant I was at, and I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. It, there's a name for it. But it, it, it's you've got a turkey, but then it's wrapped in a chicken, and it's wrapped in oh, something. Oh, the turducken. Turducken. Ducking. Yeah. John Madden's turkey with it. Yeah. What, 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 what are you showing? What are you, what are you trying to show tail. us? A tur right, uh, the tiny turkey trend. I see. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. The tiny turkey trend. Tiny turkey trend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a tiny turkey. <laughs> oh, aren't they cute? <laughs> yeah, right. No, no <laughs> but uh, uh, turducken. Single serving. And I, and I had turducken. I like tofurkey. And tur turducken yeah, was pretty turkey. interesting. Pretty interesting, but it I takes understand. forever to prepare, so and to cook. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And uh, the hardest part is getting the birds to eat each other in the right order. That's right. That's <laughs> correct, Tim. Very good, Tim. Very eat good. Eat that chicken, damn it! Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that, that was it. Was free range, all right? Yeah. Y yes. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, you know. Uh, so we're just gonna we're gonna do a. Uh, and I think Jack's gonna have some turkey, but he's old, so he doesn't eat a lot, mm. right? <laughs> so uh, we're gonna be left with a lot of fucking turkey, and and I'll then, be happy to come over on the weekend and eat some of it. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to, you know. Well, I've been wanting to get over there at some point. Do, do you have anywhere to go on Thanksgiving? Not particularly. I'm going. It's it's going to be like. 27 degrees out. I'm not going oh, to Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, cold. it's supposed to be very by, cold. By Saturday, it'll be in the 40s again. So, but yeah. 27, no. I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm watching the parade on the, uh, on the, on, on the TV like normal. What, you know, what, what, I've what, never what? gone to the parade. What is that? 40 thing? years in the city, I've never gone to the yeah. Thanksgiving parade. What is that? It was either warmer. too cold what, or What is you know, that you're terrible. trying to show us, Ray? Oh my that's, God! That's no. Sarah Palin Sarah. talking about Thanksgiving while the guy is slaughtering. Oh, that's the uh, that's a oh, great yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah, that's an old. I know. I just love yeah, it. Yeah, but so it's much. that, yeah, that, that along with that, 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 that along with that along that along with Trump and the toilet paper on his foot never get old. Uh, <laughs> you know, they never get old. <laughs> and um, so uh, let's. And Jeff, of course, I'm sure you're having a, a turkey at your place, right? Well, I am, and, and I'm cooking it too. And that's Ooh. I was oh, going to ask: Is there any of you guys cooking, or am I the only chef? Uh, Marjorie is cooking the turkey. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can cook a turkey. I can actually do a very good turkey, but she won't let me touch it. Yeah. She, she. Oh, you don't know how to make turkey. <laughs> Who? Making turkey is the. I've told people this, and I used to do this on the, on the show. Uh, I said I, I can teach you how to make a turkey just by telling it to you here on the air. You know, turkey is one of the easiest things to make. 
and the especially most especially if they have that pop up thing. Yeah, if you, you get the pop up the thing, you know when it's you know when it's First done. Thing I pull out, and then you can just up. keep basting it. It's fun to keep basting it. And what I like to do is I used to like to throw some uh, some <laughs> wine in there, some red wine, and baste the turkey with the red wine. Uh, and uh, the gravy came out great, you know. I no. never hits an oven. Yours, uh, what you do? What do you dump it in the hot water, boiling? Uh, no, I, I do mine on an infrared cooker. Oh, really? <laughs> How's that go for you? Right, cooks in two and a half hours. Really? Don't they uh, pull should, that a should, microwave? I don't know what we're talking about this tonight <laughs> for because we still no, got one uh, more show to do this week, and I've wasted okay. my turkey show. Yes, Ra, uh, John. Oh well, so one more day for that, right? Uh, yes. Oh, infrared yeah. thing, isn't that, they sell those on Popeil Pocket Fisherman uh, oh, commercials? Yeah. What's they, your schedule going to be like, Alex? Oh, what? Yeah, what did you say? Do the jerky that way. What did you say? You, you can Thursday you can night. Yeah, we're we're, we're we're taking the network down pretty much. I mean, there'll be we're, we'll be running some Thanksgiving stuff, uh, okay. but okay. Uh, can you rip uh, off. Turkey, uh, can you rip off that Channel Twenty thing where they got the the flame of the fire going and uh, no, you, you just oh yeah on YouTube the Yule log yeah the Yule log yeah. 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 yeah I can do that they got that here too yeah I can Channel do that have a turkey <laughs> sitting there roasting on the on the screen you know I might do that <laughs> I might actually do that I might yeah Gab turkey, Gabbard yeah. used to do that on Channel Twenty oh that was him doing that yeah that's on Christmas say, Eve so. you don't do that on Thanksgiving. Well, that's, that's, more, that's more Christmas. Christmas. Christmas started two weeks ago. Exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> all the so ads. Just, Christmas ads. Just now. point the camera towards your oven and put it on the turkey and just hey. leave it there. Yeah, I mean, I could do something like that. I'm surprised nobody's done that on YouTube yet. They're gonna look around. Somebody must have at this point. Hey, yeah. if you want to slaughter turkey your own turkey, turkey, five hours. <laughs> you you can get um. I just looked it up. One of those tur turkey slaughtering cones on Amazon for twenty six ninety eight. I get two. They're small. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I want to slaughter. Alex, Alex, and then you get Alex. Yeah. do you remember in yes. the old Midnight Black Blue Friday Days? Sale. Yes. In the old Midnight Blue Days, do you remember when we went down yep. to the live poultry place? That's correct. To do a, a recording with... A couple of people that were doing this sort of fantasy thing about being a chicken or something like that. It was something weird. But I was the guy back in the back with the uh, well, monitoring the sound. I was in the room where they were slaughtering chickens. And they and I'd be sitting there and the guy would, would walk in with a chicken, stick its head down and just say, go, you know, like, <laughs> well, like, two, like two or three of those things. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, but, but they pluck like, them for you and give them to you warm. You take them home. And none of you yeah, guys. Then they, like, yeah, then they threw them into the deep, into the plucker. You know, the yeah. little, hey, little pluck, you know, with this rubber kind of conversation, like none of you guys Paris like Republicans. Yeah, this is. I did not know <laughs> that was one of my favorite shoots I've ever done. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, because yeah. we had all that these was, chicken, uh, we had all these the chickens project, in the cages. Project. Yeah. And we uh, very, it very just allowed, me, allowed yeah. me to really do a great uh, job of photography and everything in that. It, it was, was it was a great it was a great. I wish uh, I had I that. Yeah, I don't I, have uh, that on tape anywhere. I wish I did. Yeah, I wish. Because it really was to Foster cool. Farms was... chicken, and they just hung them on a thing, and they just rolled on down the road. I, I, I don't have any of that stuff. Hundreds of chickens anymore. hanging upside down. I don't have that God. stuff anymore. Some other guy ha does have it though. Has all the all the uh, all the. Uh, Master tapes, you know what? What do we call them? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, I have a couple, but it, they're they're not in very good shape. I'm still trying to get myself over to one of these video places. I have some three quarter inch stuff, mostly the stuff I worked on, mm -hmm. but you know, it includes it includes some interesting stuff. Yeah. I just that it didn't. I had a friend of mine try to make a, you know, a VHS copies, and every edit just <laughs> scroll. I mean. It was, you know, the sound, the quality was terrible. I know. You need to have, now you have digital. They could probably correct it digitally. Well, uh, part of the problem was yeah. that those tapes. These were these were the th those were the three quarter inch, and then there was yeah. also the the half inch tape that we the used them cassettes, for black right. and white that were reel to reel. Those things were very hard to get to run because they depended on the tape being lubricated because it went around what we called a helical scan drum. 
Right, which and, whip around and, real quickly. And it, with age, those things lose their lubrication, and so you put them on, and they start running, and then they just stop and get stuck on the drum. That so, happens to a lot of women. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So just like no, with no. just like with women, you've got to have so somebody, and you can only you make one, that you, lube. No, but you can right? only make one pass. You've got to get the recording on the first pass, but you keep feeding this lubrication to the tape as it goes through, and you maybe have yourself a copy. But I, you know. Most of that stuff is lost to the ages because of that. Well, that reminds me about that. I really want to, I have like three or four of those old tapes. I'm looking at them now, actually. Yeah. And I just need to go and see. I, I called up one of these places down in Midtown. They said, well, bring it in. We deal with three-quarter inch. You know, I just haven't, you know, it's just like, really? Well, <laughs> if any of that stuff is John my work Alex on it, I'll help. I'll help. It, I'll, I'll help. He lugged it, around. Yeah. I'll help for, pay for sure. it. I'll help pay oh, for forever, it if, it's right? got, if any of my stuff's on there, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. look, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, mostly I kept stuff that I thought was interesting or stuff that I, that I edited or I was on. Remember, I was yeah. along with you. We were, I, I did uh, book reviews and things. I have some of those. Yeah. I have a little demo, a uh, small tape of like three or four things that I worked on. Yeah. You know, I thought I was going to become a video editor, but, you know never went there well, i gotta look i gotta look at all the stuff we got out of Anne's because yeah, i, I think too. she we'll, had some we'll get tapes. into that we'll get anyway. into that yeah somewhere along the line i'll turn go on to the internet and uh, I, things I, get boring I, here sometime i'll put yeah, it on we yeah. can let's we can watch it <laughs> well it's getting boring right now talking about our past but anyway yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> i'll forgive you hey. because you've had a couple of beers i sure have yeah yeah and they weren't lightweight beers either you know really these are these are eight nine percent uh, imperial stout beers. Do you, really you know? Do you, do you know? Do you know? I, do you, I do you, do you, by the a, way, do you know who was here today with uh, with Buddy? He had him come over, Paul Schaefer. Oh, you're oh, kidding! Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love to be here. Yeah, yeah fr from the wow. uh, what's the band? He was the uh, was he? Uh, Letterman, Letterman, right? Letterman, right? He was the band Johnny Letterman. Carson's band. No, yeah, oh, no. Letterman. 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 Oh, band. Letterman. Yeah. Carson, he was also in a bunch of movies in the '60s and '70s. Oh, he, sure. he, he, he was he also he was also on Saturday Night Live when it started with the right. band. Yeah, he was original. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, he was here. Uh, cool. Yeah. I had met him he, years he, ago. Is he just pretty much retired, or is he doing anything? You know, I don't know. He and Buddy had just were hanging out to uh, reminisce yeah. about stuff, and so I went and did oh. other stuff. So I just yeah. you know. I told him, you know, he knows Shecky, so we had something common to talk about. I was going to say, yeah, with Larryman. Yeah. Right. Hey, listen, I just looked, and the uh, clock is, uh, well, I got We're running out. 40, yeah. 40 seconds so, before the music. So, Alex, yeah. your your friend Shecky is the same Shecky that Letterman used to talk about? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah, because they found the name Shecky funny. Uh, his name wasn't <laughs> Shecky, actually. He never mm -hmm. used his name's Rick Sheckman, and he never used the name Shecky till he got to the Letterman show, and I can't remember who it was started calling him Shecky, uh, and so he became Shecky. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah. I still call him Rick, but you know everybody else. Oh, calls you've him known Shecky. him longer, <laughs> much longer. I knew him before yeah. the Letterman show. And oh, he, forever, and yeah. he was with it after the first year of that show's existence. Yeah, well, our friend Jim was like, that's how I met him a couple times. It was uh, our friend uh, used to work for you, Jim, New Sheckman from, so, you yeah, know, we went yeah. to, we, we'd hang out a few bars occasionally, but it's been 20 years. Well, listen, <laughs> uh, we got we got to get together, John, really. We do, we, we will do work it. that up. We'll wait for the snow to go away, yes. Anyway, Phil, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, we didn't talk once really about Trump, just peripherally, and that's no wonderful. No Trump zone. Yeah, uh, and, and, and Jeff, great talking to you uh, and having you on the program, as always. Patrick, maybe oh, hey, good talking to you. I And Bree, uh, if I don't see you before Thanksgiving, have a nice Thanksgiving. Bree? Have a tiny turkey. Bree's I doing something. he's frozen here. Is he frozen or is he yeah. doing something else? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, he's frozen. Uh, 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 <laughs> Tim, thank you. Tim, thank you. Tim, he didn't say much tonight. Brian, thank you. Thank you to John Rockwell, to Ray Renati, to Kevin. 
Hope maybe you'll all come back and join me tomorrow night for our big Thanksgiving show, whatever that ah. will be. You know, it's hard to be frozen in Dubai. Isn't it really hot uh, there? Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody, uh, why don't you do something and give everybody a big wave goodbye. There we go. There they go. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, let me hang up on each and every one of them er unceremoniously uh, because we have to, like relinquish the Skype lines for the next program, which is, of course, Jack Bishop and a little program uh, that he likes to call uh, The uh, Intersection. That's next. That will be followed at, uh, let's see here, what is it, uh, 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections tomorrow night at uh, 8.30 Eastern Time. It's our sports show with the franchise MC called The Arena. At 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And then tomorrow night at 10. We'll be right back here. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? All right. Bye-bye, everybody.